First, out of the gate, Joe L. What kind of microphone are we rocking there? Uh, man, it's a SM7B, man. I hope it's up to standard. <laughs> I hope it's up to par. I, I hope so. It might be the single greatest microphone used on this podcast right now. They're just like, here, use this. Put Just start talking into this right here. Oh, man, thank you. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. My name is Corey, by the way. Nice to meet you. I'm Joe L. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Joe L. Please welcome to the podcast, Joe L. Barnes. Oh, my God. Thank you so much for having me. I went and did some homework, and I'm like, I wonder what the L stands for. And then I saw you on a TV station that I grew up watching out of Chicago, WGN. Oh, wow. You were doing an interview on there, and someone's, I think someone asked you what the L stood for, and they got it wrong, and I'm not getting it wrong. It's Joel, but we pronounce it Joel. Absolutely. Your Absolutely. choice, or that's how you were raised? Actually, so what happened was I uh, I never wanted anybody to call me Joel. I actually got into an argument with my Algebra 2 teacher in high school about <laughs> if my name was Joel or Joel. And he just was never going to let it be Joel. He's like, no, it's Joel. I'm like, you're not going to tell me how my name is pronounced, sir. <laughs> but, of course, whenever social media started taking off, Instagram, Vine, Facebook, all of that stuff, I um. I wanted to differentiate them. Like, I need people to say Joe or Joel, like not Joel. So I, I tried to put a dash in between, but Facebook at the time wouldn't let you put the dash. So I just put a space there and just kept it Joel and then Barnes. And then when I started traveling with a guy named Eddie James to have our names featured on the album, he just took our, like, our face, he just took my Facebook name and was like, okay, I'm just going to put this on there. And then from that point, I was like, well, it's stuck there now, so I don't know if I can even ever change it or if I even want to change it. So after the being on those albums and seeing it that way, I was just like, okay, whatever. Like let's just let's just run with it. So we just left it as is, and to this day, it's been that way. So three things we don't know about you. Oh my god, I think you might be the first person that I've ever told this to, as far as like publicly. Three things that people don't know about me. Um, one, I really like um, scented candles. Like, I, like, love, like, candles that I can, like, they just set the room, the smell and the atmosphere. So, like, I use, like, one of these. I, I don't hope I don't hope I'll get in trouble. It's probably blurring it out for a reason, but this is one of my favorite candles. What's your just, favorite um, scent? Really, really nice smell. I'm really into bergamot. Like, I'm really into, like, like bergamot, but also into, like, very clean smells. Like, I'm really into that. My wife has a, um, it's not a candle, but you put the, you know, you put the little disc in the warmer Yes. And she's found yes. one that smells exactly like, in my opinion, Fruity Pebbles. Oh, that's incredible. I mean, exactly. And I said, let me see the label. And it was something else and a mishmash of this, that, that, and this. Yeah. And I said, it is Fruity Pebbles in the house, and I'm here for it. Oh, love that. It smells like my childhood. Love that. <laughs> love that. <laughs> Number two. Second thing that most people don't know about me. Uh, I am an anime nerd. Like, I watch a lot of anime. So, like, all things Naruto, One Piece, I'm in, like... I'm into like I'm watching uh, My Hero Academia right now. Like I'm really big like anime nerd. Some of the best character development, some of the best like lessons I I think I learned in anime because like you watch someone start out as this like I don't hate to say low level, but just like barely know what they're doing in any martial art form or in anything. And then as the the show progresses over the 300 episodes or 500 plus episodes or a thousand episodes, you watch them develop into this like amazing character that like somehow pulls people in. And you're rooting for them the entire time and before you know it. Like it just teaches you consistency, diligence, show up every day, put in the effort and like the small little day by day it feels like nothing's changes, but then you look back over time and nothing's the same. Like you come so far over the last six months or the last three days, but then you know what I mean? So I'm an anime nerd. And the thing I'm saying publicly that I don't think I've ever said to anyone is I do not use the same toothbrush twice. You do not use the same toothbrush twice. So that no. literally means you might go yeah. through over 365 toothbrushes within the year. Yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I know. It's bad for the it's bad for pollution. I know. I know. I know. Every all the like say your people are going to kill me. I'm telling you. But I did something mm -hmm. happen in your childhood? You're like, nope. Not a, not necessarily in my like childhood. I think it like happened as I got older. Like I think I had um, tonsillitis once, and I was like, no, 
never again. Whatever that is, never again. So I uh, stopped using the same toothbrush, especially during that time. I just felt like it was gross to like brush my teeth and try to clear my like my and then use that same toothbrush. I'm like, this has the sickness on it. I don't want to keep using this. Let me rewind a second. My son dabbles in anime world, so I appreciate your your love for it. But I also like that you've found life lessons while you're watching oh, it. Yeah. And I'm a firm believer if we're paying attention, we can find so much of that stuff outside of anime in other shows. For example, I'll just say this out loud. My wife and I just blazed through, finally, Ted Lasso. And yeah. there's an insane amount of life lessons and metaphor in that that you can use for your Man. everyday life. So Absolutely. Absolutely. It's incredible. Before singing, worst job. I've only had three jobs in my life. When I was when I was senior in high school, I worked at Wendy's for <gasps> all of two weeks. Joel, so did I. Yeah. When yeah. I was sixteen years old. Yeah. That's wild, man. Yeah, I worked at Wendy's my my senior year for like all of two weeks, and I thought they were hiring me to like you know work the like the drive through window or like you know flip a burger or two. No, they hired me to clean out the gutter that they dump the mop water in because fries and all kinds of stuff was stuck. And so like I had to put on like three layers of gloves and like kind of like scrape the gunk out of the like to keep it from getting clogged. And I'm like, why would you hire me for this job? So I I lasted two weeks and I was like, yeah, no, this is not. I'm not a scraper. I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I'm not a, a gutter scraper. That's What's not. something you'll never say no to? Sleep. Sleep. <laughs> you love your sleep. No. 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 Um, yeah. I, I. I love sleep. Um. I don't know. Something I'll never say no to. I don't know. A good pickup game of basketball. Like I'll never say no to a game of basketball. Like, okay. Let's, let's play. Let's watch. Let's let, let's do something about basketball. I'm, I'm about that. Who's on your duet? bucket list okay you got it this is an instant question because are you talking like mainstream or are you talking worship because that's there's two different where do you want to go two different answers i'll go with you wherever you go i would list the people as far as worship my dream duet would either be stephanie gretzinger or cc winans or rita springer or amanda cook like i would love to duet with those like legends if i could on the mainstream side, it's a different thing. I'm a very huge John Bellion fan. I'm a very huge John Mayer fan. I'm a very huge, believe it or not, Tracy Chapman fan. Of course, I, I love my hip hop. So I love J. Cole, love Jordan Lucas. Like this, this, it's a different thing if I could like sing with different people. So like, yeah, those are me. Toby Nuige, Nuige, love him. Yeah. I will show my age to you. When I first got into mainstream radio, I played Fast Car as a new song. Ooh. I introduce it as a new Yo. song. Oh my god. So is so Tracy watching it become what it's become. Oh yeah. And the cover song, which I thought was done phenomenally. I felt like it was uh true to the original, but yet it had the Luke Comb twist. But I'm wondering, is it because of your father's love for that artist that you gravitated towards that? Because I've noticed my kids kind of love what I love. Do you think that's where that came from? I was about to say, you must have did your research because that's how my fa- I got introduced to Tracy Chapman from my father. Yeah, my dad loved Tracy Chapman. He did, he loves Andy Irie. He loved Amy Winehouse. He was always listening to like this eclectic music that I'd never heard of before. I'd never even heard of The Fray, but he knew what The Fray was. Like, and like Hootie and the Blowfish. Like, he was listening to all these things that I would never would have been introduced to had he not like brought it home. So, like, yes. But because of his introduction to it, I was obsessed with it. I couldn't stop listening to these artists. Like I'm like, I have an Amy Winehouse like a uh, vinyl in my room now because I'm like, this is the stuff that I grew up on listening as as a kid. So yeah, there is a Tracy Chapman song that does not get the attention that Fast Car does, and it was a song called "Give Me One Reason." Absolutely. <laughs> you remember that one? Oh. And I'll turn right back around. Yeah. What? Yes, absolutely. Love it. Give me one reason to stay here. Oh, my God. That yes. cool, You're bluesy correct. guitar. Oh, man. We got to go listen to that Ooh. when we're done here. Joel. Absolutely. I'm like, yeah, man. You're, you're speaking my language, bro. Like, okay. This is- <laughs> okay. Your story starts in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, home of, in my opinion, one of the beautifulest marquees. The Alhambra Theater. I love a great lit yes. theater sign. Have you ever been to the Alhambra Theater? I've been to the Alhambra Theater several times, like 
all throughout my like childhood, man. Like we would go there to watch like cats and all of the different the like theater like shows and plays. We would, we would do field trips there as a kid. Like when I was on like in school and all the stuff, my mom would take me for all of the iconic things. Like he would come and do shows there. Like it is very iconic. It's, it's most people don't know about the Alhambra. Most people don't know about Hopkinsville. They don't know about Hoptown. They don't know about the Alhambra. So that you really did do your research. Like I, I love that like little. Like tidbit there, that's great. I am trying to impress you, and hopefully it's working. You, are, I'm impressed because you're like you're bringing up all the nostalgic memories for me, man. Like I remember, like when I was in school, like taking a field trip there and seeing cats for the first time. I was like, what is happening? Looking around the room and watching all the things happen. Like, oh yeah. Have you had a chance yeah. to perform there yet? I have not. I have not. Is that I'm on a bucket list? They just re- they just redid it. It is because they just redid it. They just like reworked it, reframed it, rebuilt it. So like, I actually want to go. Have I done the math right. right? You are the second of 17 children? Second youngest. Second so I have youngest. A little brother, me, and then the other ones up. Yeah. Let's do the names. Let's see if you still remember the names of the starting 17. Oh, okay. So if you start with my little brother, Dasha, then there's me, my brother, Aaron, passed, my um, sister, Candace, my brother, John, my brother, Tiago, uh, my brother, Javon, my sister, Monique, my brother, Brandon, um, Julian, JoJo. Kirk, Tavo, Steve, Quita, Kiki, Dexter. Am I am I 16, 17? I lost I? count. <laughs> I, you see what I'm saying? Like it's there's a lot of us. Is that it's your guest us, list pretty much for every show? It's like, uh oh, here's 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 fifty. Yeah, oh, it's my man. family. Oh, uh, well listen, yeah, because the reality is my, my aunt had nine of her own, and that's just one of my aunts. Woo! That's it's I like literally it's literally a massive family. If, like all my family comes that you're looking at 200 plus people that would show up immediately. Before mom and dad go their separate ways, dad is ex-military. What kind of impact yes. did that have on your life? At first, it weighed because I saw what it did to my mother. I remember being 16 and kind of going through the process of it. And I remember telling my mom, like, I understand that this is hurtful. And I understand that this like is heavy. But I also understand that like, if you guys are hurting each other, then it makes sense for you guys to separate. Excuse me. I don't I don't think it makes sense for you guys to try to stick around for something if you're damaging each other. And I wasn't I didn't even know what I was like saying at the time. Besides the fact I'm like, you're hurt when he's here. You're hurt when he's gone. So like we got to we got to pick something here. I just don't I don't want you guys to like continue to hurt each other. Like that's you know what I mean? So now looking back, this is going to be controversial. But now looking back at 30, I'm like. I've spent the last couple of years like really spending time with my parents and asking them questions about their childhood and their upbringing. And I'm asking about who they were and the things that they got into that their parents never knew about. And I'm asking all the things and I'm learning as I'm learning about them. I'm looking at them. I'm like, you two were never really like cut out for each other in a sense. Like God brought y'all together for a reason. But I also think like it's such an interesting like pairing because I'm like, mom, you're a country girl from Kentucky. Dad, you're a city boy from Virginia. Like, two different upbringings i'm like mom you had an outhouse you had to draw water from the well to like and then heat it up to like make food i'm like dad you had running water like you were in the city it's like you guys were completely different upbringings i'm like how y'all found your way to each other so interesting and i'm like of course you guys didn't understand each other's language you spoke two different languages like this doesn't really make sense and then i'm like dad you were a soldier mom you were an evangelist it doesn't especially back in like the 70s 80s like that that little pairing doesn't really make a lot of since but also like it gets deeper than that but i'm also like it, it weighed on me as a teenager but i also understood like i get to have a relationship with the both of you either way whether you guys are together or not hmm. i kind of just was like it is what it is you have a real tough season of life in that uh, chunk of time oh nine your parents divorce your mom succumbs to some health issues uh it's not yes. looking good and then your older brother takes his own life how did you initially handle that news? I walk into the room and I find his body and I, 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 I panic and fall to the floor outside of the, like, outside of the room. I run out of the room. I sit on the floor and I like weep. This is the first time I ever shared it publicly. I don't, I, I never. So here's the thing. I, I rarely talk about this aspect because of how uncomfortable it makes other people feel. Not. Like I've processed it, I've sat with the Lord, we've walked through healing, I've relived that moment a million times to be able to look it in the face and be like, this is such a tragic moment. It's such a very heavy moment and I think it's a very sensitive moment. 
and I've had to like relive it over and over and over again. And I think me and the Lord have had to like walk through it and like look at it from every angle. But I, I really tell that this this part of the story because it makes a lot of other people uncomfortable. They're like, I would have never thought that would have happened because it's like I don't look like what I've been through. But you know, I found my brother as he was, and I I think I panicked and I I think I cried so hard like my eyes felt like they were about to pop out of my head. Like I had no more tears left. Like it's just emotion and very red, very sore eyes from like weeping so so long. It was a very like very tough time. I remember my, my mom, my me, my mom, my brother, one of my other brothers, like in the front yard, like in a frenzy because we have no idea like how what to do or even how to navigate it. Like we're just in shock. And before I know it, there's 50 cars in my driveway and ambulance coming up and pulling out the stretchers and I'm just like this is the stuff that you see on movies and I think I, I was telling my people the other day like there was a bubble that popped in my like conscious like we all live in this like invisible bubble that oh this is stuff that never happens to family that never happens to me that never happened to my family like my family's normal like blah blah blah, blah. and then it's on your doorstep and you're like H how did I not see this coming how did I not know that this was even possible and I think I watched my mother do something very interesting. She like immediately began to pray. She didn't like yell at God. She didn't curse him. She didn't like blame anyone. She just immediately began to pray like, God, I don't understand what's happening, but I trust that you're going to carry us. And I was so shocked at that response. Could I have said anything differently? Could I have oh done anything differently? Where do you land there? Yeah, man, I've literally replayed that entire day, like I said, a million times. And I thought to myself, if I could have, what did I not say? What did I not ask? How did I like miss that that was where he was? You know what I mean? Like, could I have done something? Like, I'm like, and I think about that day and I'm like, we had a great day. Like we play video games like we'd always do. We clean the house, we crack jokes, we watch YouTube videos and died laughing. Like we just, man, we, it was a great day. And I'm just like, where did it all go low? How did it like? How did we go from that high like day to that sort of that sort of like really low low? And I'm like, God, what if what could I have done differently? You know what I mean? And I think where I land is, it's hard to heal what you conceal, and I think he concealed his 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 dark days very well. I land in the space of like, well, I learned, I did the best what I could with what I knew. Like I didn't, I couldn't see it. Like I'm like I'm asking questions. I'm like. I'm curious. I'm like spending time, but I'm like, unless you talk to me, I don't know what's happening. And I think now it's developed this like Superman complex where I'm always asking the hard questions as much as people will allow me. I'm like, Hey, where are you at? How are you actually doing? Where are you? What do you need? You need a safe space. Do you like, I've, I've kind of hyper-focused on providing a safe space for people so that they never get to that low again. So that they know that at least one person will be consistent or at least one person will ask the questions. Or one person will be like present. It can make the biggest difference. So I don't know, man. I I've grieved it, but I've also developed this protective nature in my heart to just kind of protect anyone else from getting that low again. That I, as much as I can. Hypothetical question: An Amazon box shows up at your place. You open it up. And there's a red telephone in there. You pick up the phone, and it's your brother, and you get five minutes. Ooh. Oh, I, I ne wow, that's a really incredible question. I think I would catch him up. I'm like, let's let's catch up. Like, let's catch you up on everything that's happened over the last 12 years, last 13 years. I would try to like, if, if it's a red telephone, I would try my best to put it on speaker if I could and navigate it and ask the questions, at least for the first two minutes. I would try to call my mother, give her at least two of those minutes as well. Like, I need you to like, it would I, it would cause so much reconciliation and like settling in her heart just to hear his voice. Like I think I would not be selfish and keep that five minutes to myself. I would try my best to connect the phones between my mother and him. I would ask questions. I'm like, where, why, why, why didn't you like let us in and why did you like go that low? Like we could have. I'm not blaming you, but I'm also just like that caused a lot of like heartbreak and damage to our mother, to our father, to our family. And I think if you would have known any differently, if you would have known the, the repercussions, I think you would have made a different choice, however comma. 
I think I would be like, let's 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 catch you up in this two minutes, and then while we're doing that, I'm gonna call our mother, and you you and her are gonna have a, a dialogue because you that that needs to happen. She needs to like have a conversation, mm. and she's gonna ask questions, and you're gonna answer questions. Like we're gonna actually do some um, reconciliation for my mother here, but that's probably would be my highlight. I'm like watching my mother talk to her son one more time. When you look back on your season with Maverick City Music, what word comes to mind? Bittersweet. 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 It was an, it was a really amazing season. That 2019, that 2020, and and into the end of 2021 because I left in 22, January 22. Bittersweet. Beautiful moments. A lot of incredible like songs were written. A lot of incredible laughs were made uh, or had. Incredible moments. I made a lot of amazing friendships um, and relationships. The bitter part is that, you know, what was beautiful back then is, is for me at least, is over. I don't know. I think everything's completely different. We live in a different world now. Everyone's grown and developed and evolved and um, the same people, but a little, a little different. And I think, like, it's just, I think everything back then was a lot simpler. Bittersweet for me. The new album is called The Good Shepherd. Congratulations, Good Shepherd, by the man. way. Thank you. Thank you. Let's end with this. I love to point people towards your music, The Good Shepherd. I want you to choose one song. Corey, I want you to go listen to this after you hear this podcast episode. And here's why I want you to listen to this song. You need to go listen to The Good Shepherd trilogy. Yes. So it's the testimony into the song and to the reprise. You need to listen to The Good Shepherd trilogy. And, I, and why is because... It encompasses the entirety of the heartbeat and the pulse and the aim and the focus of the entire project. Like it explains everything from top to bottom in every other song. So every other song is a piece of this of the trilogy. The trilogy itself is the entire embodiment of the project. So if you listen to the trilogy, it will Yeah, it'll it'll show you like the heartbeat behind the record. It'll let you in on what I've been sitting with for the last almost two years like it, it i think it'd be really really special well i'm gonna honor that you answered every question on my sheet and so i oath to you i will listen to it at full volume when i get a chance later today okay absolutely thank you Corey. joe l barnes this has been a pleasure you are a delightful no. young man thank you so much i appreciate it and we will talk again for part two okay absolutely got to do a part two Got to do a part two. We just scratched the surface. That's all. Oh, yeah, man. (laughs) What else with Corey Mann? With your host, Corey Mann. Original music and theme song by Chris Cron. Share this episode with a friend. And thanks for listening.